A common programming construct is to create a list using an accumulator and a for loop. And Python provides a convenient way to implement this, and it's known as a list comprehension. So let's talk about list comprehensions. First, here's a general template for constructing a list using an accumulator where we do not use list comprehension. What we would write is we would have some identifier that we use as the accumulator, and we would assign to that an empty list. Next, we would have a for loop. I'll say that the loop variable is item, and that's in some iterable. And then the body of this for loop, all we do is we take the accumulator, and we call the append method on that, and we append some expression that may or may not explicitly depend on the loop variable item. To illustrate how this works, let's say we have some list of numeric values, and we want to create a copy of it where all the values have been doubled. So let's start by creating the original list. Let's say x list is equal to a list with elements 0, 5, 12, minus 17, maybe 43.2, 57, 103. If we want a new list with all these values doubled, we could do the following. We'll call our accumulator yList. We'll initialize that to the empty list. And then we'll say for x in x list. We'll do the following. We'll take yList, call its append method, and then append two times the value of x. And hitting return twice, that for loop is executed, and if we look at the elements of y list now, we see that they are all twice as much as the values in x list. Now, how would we do this using list comprehension? Well, refer to that general template up above that consisted of three lines. With list comprehension, we could do it with a single statement where we have the accumulator, and then we assign to it the following. We put square brackets. And then within that, we put the expression, then for item in the iterable. And that's it. Well, actually, the assignment isn't part of the list comprehension. Only the part between square brackets is the list comprehension. Let's put this to the test. We can give an expression within square brackets. So let's say 2 times x, and then for the item, a loop variable, let's say x in x list. Now when we hit return, we get all the items, or all the values in x list, doubled. And of course, if we wanted to assign this to some new identifier, we could. So there's z list. Essentially, that's like our accumulator. And we'll use the list comprehension, where this time, let's go with 3 times x, 4x in x list. When we hit return, whatever that list comprehension return was assigned to z list. So let's check that out. And we see that we get the values of x list, but now tripled. Let's try writing a function that uses list comprehension, where it can scale the elements of a list by whatever value is specified by a parameter. So let's define something we'll call LC for list comprehension. Scalar, where there is some scale value specified as the first parameter. And then the second parameter is some list. And this function will simply return the list comprehension that's given by the scale times x for x in x list. Hitting return twice, that function is defined, and let's put it to the test. Let's call LC scalar, and this time let's give an integer value of 3 as the scale value, and x list as the actual second argument, and we get the values of x list multiplied by 3. Of course, we could assign the return value to 
some identifier. So we could say z list is equal to whatever LC scalar returns when the scale value is 5. And let's just go ahead and give a list with the integer values 1, 2, 3, and 4 explicitly as the second parameter. And when we do this, what is z list? It's 5 times each of those values in the original list that was passed as the second argument. Now let's create a list we'll call S list of single character strings. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and we'll leave it at that. And now how about we call LC scalar and we'll give it an argument of 3 and an argument of S list. And when we hit return now, the list comprehension took each of those elements, which was a single character string, and multiplied it by the integer 3, which for a string gives us string repetition, and it created a list that way. So we got each of those original characters in a new list, but repeated three times. Let's write one more list comprehension. Let's take the quantity i plus 1, we'll multiply that by s for i and s in enumerate of s list. So recall that enumerate will pair an item with its index. So we'll get a tuple of an index and an item. We'll simultaneously assign those to i and s, two loop identifiers. And then the value that we will put into this list is i plus 1 times the item s. And hitting return now, we see we get a repeated once, b twice, c three times, d four times, and e five times. Now list comprehensions can actually be much more complicated than this. And one can have multiple for loops as well as conditional statements within the list comprehension. But we haven't talked about conditional statements. And we generally won't employ list comprehensions in the code that we write. So we'll leave our introduction to list comprehension at that and move on to summarize what we've covered in the past set of videos.